As we get started with our message this morning, will you join me in a quick moment of prayer? Dear Lord, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this community, this family of faith. We ask that your spirit guide us this morning and take us to new depths of wisdom, <coughs> love, and fellowship. May this message be a blessing to your people today, Lord, and may it be pleasing to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, I want to say thank you again so much for having me. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the last time I was here. It wasn't that long ago. Um, and I have been looking forward to going back ever since Dean Owens invited me. So um, thank you for having me. I, I love being here. <laughs> and I hope we encounter each other um, more. So today's scripture comes from the Sermon on the Mount. <coughs> and that was our mention. mentioned. But the passage starts with the Beatitudes and continues to the lesson on being the salt of the earth and the light of the world. If you read this section too plainly, it would seem as though Jesus was teaching in a stream of consciousness kind of way, um, or randomly piecing together lessons for, the, for his multitude of followers. But these lessons are quite cohesive. The Beatitudes and then the salt of the earth um, kind of period on the end of all that. Um, and it's important for us today, I think, to be able to understand what our response to this message can be. So let's look at the Beatitudes. A quick note on the context here. Um, there are unlimited parallels between the Old and the New Testaments. I'm sure that's not a surprise. There's several parallels, parallels between the Old and New Testaments. The woes and prophecies of the prophets of the Old Testament are alluded to often in the New Testament. Similar imagery between stories of the Old and New Testaments bring out particular elements of the story. It's a literary device for emphasis. And in this case, the setting is important. Jesus is on a mountain top. Elevation of land is literally, it literally helps um, identify crucial moments of Jesus' ministry. Um, for instance, he goes up the mountaintop with some of the disciples to witness the transfiguration that was elevated, like, actually, on a mountaintop. This setting on the mountaintop mirrors that of Moses and the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments given to Moses on Mount Sinai in the Old Testament book of Exodus related a series of thou shalt not phrases, worldly things one must avoid in a daily life on earth. In contrast, the message of Jesus is one of humility, charity, and brotherly love. He teaches transformation of the inner person, and that's Jesus with the Beatitudes, the inner person, not just the outward actions of the individual. That was the Ten Commandments. Jesus presents the Beatitudes in a positive sense, um, or virtues in life. So we can see through this comparison that love becomes the motivation for the Christian. And I want to have a quick disclaimer here. I am not at all discrediting the Ten Commandments. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that the parallel and the similarities of the stories really do bring an emphasis to this particular moment in Jesus' ministry. And some are claiming, some like to claim, that this is one of the most important messages of Jesus' ministry. And that's based on the conclusions of these parallels. Okay. So, having said that, I bet you didn't need a guest speaker to come to you today to say that love is the message of Christianity, that love is the purpose of Christianity. I bet you didn't need me to come and say that today. Well, love is the message and the purpose of Christianity, at least in my opinion. But I believe that this passage goes on to tell us more about that love. And if you'll go there with me, I think we're in store for a relevant, hope-filled strategy to do love in this day and age. Immediately after the Beatitudes, Jesus tells us that we are the salt of the earth. And now if you Google, what does it mean to be the salt of the earth, which I often do, <laughs> um, it says that being the salt of the earth 
means to be exceptionally kind and generous. And that's technically my paraphrasing, but it, it, it rambles about being generous and being kind. <laughs> so being exceptionally kind and generous does seem to be part of the Beatitudes. Um, but it, um, like you can say, okay, blessed, of the, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the merciful, um, and so on. But salt has its own connotations. And like I said, I don't think these are two separate sermons happening here. I think being the salt of the earth is a continuation of the message of the Beatitudes. Salt is an ever-present ingredient to earth. Salt can be mined, and it can be extracted from seawater. It is the most commonly used ingredient in kitchens across the globe. Salt gives our food flavor. I, personally, am a huge fan of salt on my popcorn. And if you've been to a movie theater, you can probably relate to a recurring situation of mine. You're at the movies. The room goes dark. Advertisements finally subside. And sponsors get their time on the big screen. A blank white screen appears. This background appears right in front of you. And you hear the sound of popping popcorn. And fluffy, buttery popcorn starts to fill the screen until you're staring at the most beautiful snack food, completely consuming your vision. <coughs> well, the popcorn drops. Ice fills the screen. And you hear the clanking and the cracking, and your mouth starts to go a little dry. Then dark, bubbly soda fills the screen from bottom to the top, and you are left with ice swimming happily in the beverage until suddenly you're parched. <laughs> oh my god, it gets me every time. <laughs> okay. So with the sound of a slurping straw, the dark soda is drained, and the simple Coca-Cola look is all that's left in the middle of the white display. It is at this point in my movie-going experience that I make my exit. And $26 later, <laughs> and a newfound commitment to go to the gym the next day, I return with a bag of salted, buttery popcorn and the largest cherry Coke I can find. And you see, there's more to this picture than the salt. Salt on the palate is not just flavorful, and it's not just present in the majority of our diet. Salt is not the whole experience. Salt causes thirst. The book of Matthew was written in the context of the early Christian church. The spread of Christianity depended on the telling of Jesus' life and ministry and the good news in a way of encouraging readers to continue to spread that message. It was written in a way that helped the reader articulate Jesus' life and ministry in a way that caused more spreading. And that's the book of Mark. So the Beatitudes are situations of the heart. Jesus is calling us to situate our hearts, to seek righteousness, to show mercy, to situate our hearts to purity, separating the worldly from the unworldly, to advocate for peace, and to preserve, I'm sorry, to persevere, even though it will be hard. In doing these things, our inner beings start to live up to their potential as extensions of God's grace, inclusiveness, power, and love. I do believe, very serious note here, I do believe that faith is a very personal thing. Um, it, for instance, it's no one's business if I pray before my meals, or if I read the Bible literally, or how literally I read the Bible, <coughs> or in what way I understand the devil and angels. My beliefs are my own. Your beliefs are your own. And your relationship with God is most certainly your own. That said, I also believe Jesus is calling us to be 
salty Christians. A salty Christian, I made that term up, <laughs> a salty Christian lives in a way that points to the love of Christ who quenches that thirst abundantly. I think this passage of scripture is asking us to answer these questions. How will you be the salt of the earth? How will you be the salt of the earth? And in what ways are your personal strengths and aspirations pointing back to Christ? As we ask ourselves these, ourselves these questions, we need to remember three things. You are not alone. Number one, you are not alone. You are a part of a community of faith that loves you for who you are as salty, and it has salty qualities of its own, this community of faith, or qualities that point to Jesus' message of love and hope. Perhaps this community helps you discover purpose. Perhaps this community provides togetherness. Maybe this community helps you see the world in new ways. Perhaps this community allows you to creatively express your gifts. Whatever makes this community home for you, remember that we are all in this together and you are not alone. Remembering that our, miss that our mission here is to be the salt of the earth. Number one, you are not alone. Having said that, number two, you have your own flavor. You're not alone, we're in this together, we're a part of something bigger, but you have your own flavor. Remember Psalm 139, 14, you are joyfully and wonderfully made. Remember that the Beatitudes were not written just for the person sitting next to you, or the elders, or those called to vocational ministry. Jesus is calling the followers to situate his or her heart according to deep virtues of Christian love. So remember, number two, you have your own flavor. And number three, my favorite, yours is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is brought to us by Christ. The Sermon on the Mount teaches us that the kingdom of heaven is among us, as Christ is among us. When it gets hard, when it seems hopeless, when the light at the end of the tunnel seems farther than ever, when you thirst, remember who you are as God's beloved. Remember that yours is the kingdom of heaven. If we are called to be the salt of the earth, we are called to inspire thirst. And where does that thirst lead the thirsty? It leads us to a place of growth, a place we can mature in our spirituality, a relationship with the one who shows us the realm of God before us. And this, my friends, is the flavor of a virtuous life in So let us, let us go out. Let us go out independently, but as one body, and live with regard to the blessed virtues that Jesus Christ has shown us. Let us be the salt that inspires thirst to those around us. Let us always remember who we are as God's beloved. And if you'll join me, let us close in prayer. God, you have sent your Son to teach us how to live virtuous lives of eternity. Help us be all that we can be by living lives that always point back to you. May we stay humbled by your constant presence, and may we lean on you always for our inspiration. It is in your name that we pray. Amen.